assault style weapons. Let's talk about this. So first thing is this video is not just for gun owners, it's for everybody because I want you to have the information that you need to make the decision that is right for you, whether or not that is liking firearms or firearm people at the end of the day. That decision is completely up to you, but at least you should make it knowing you've heard both sides of the story. So let's go ahead and get started here. By the way, if you like this kind of format, maybe consider becoming a subscriber and let me know what you think down below. Right, so assault style weapons. Well, uh, there's a number of things wrong with that from the fact that law-abiding citizens here in Canada who do own firearms legally don't use them as weapons, and that's why we call them firearms and not weapons, to the fact that the government has tried to coin this term and not been able to define it, although they have been using it to try to legislate and regulate firearms, which really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now, in my opinion, putting the word style on anything really kind of makes that first thing look and feel like shit. It kind of feels fake. It feels very disingenuous. And I feel like this is the opposite effect that the government is having from what they expect. And so maybe part of this video could be a public service announcement to them so that they understand how the rest of us see this. So let me give you an example. If you were to go to a Chinese style restaurant here in Toronto and get yourself some chicken balls, you could probably get away with that, but if you do that same shit in China, you'll get kicked out before you could say something wrong. Ask me how I know. For example, maybe you've had a rough day at work and you want to go to a massage parlor to get the rest and relaxation that you so deserve. So you call up your buddies and you tell them, hey, do you guys want to go to a shiatsu style massage parlor? And they're like, you mean a rub and tug? And you're like, no, no, I mean a, I mean a shiatsu style massage parlor. Listen. Everybody knows. They know, you know, I know, your parents know. You're going to a rub and tug and there's nothing wrong with that, but you gotta call a spade a spade and not a small spoon. By the way, Eunice, thank you for that. I've been using that phrase for quite a long time and I appreciate it. I know you're not probably watching this video, but if you are, I remember you and I appreciate you. Now, let's talk about where I think the origins of this term came from. I'm probably not 100% right here, and if you want to weigh in, please let me know down below. But I think that a lot of people, especially non-gun people, tend to think about automatic weapons of war, which is another thing that the government and the media has referred to these firearms that they've banned, such as the ones in the 2020 May OIC, as assault-style weapons. And uh, I just wanted to let you know that if you don't know this, they've been banned already. Uh, in fact, uh, fully automatic firearms have been banned in Canada since the 1970s, and the semi-automatic firearms have been heavily regulated both in the non-restricted and the restricted class, especially so in the restricted class. Now, we can go back even further and talk about the scary black ARs that were produced by a man named Eugene Stoner in the 50s and 60s. This is probably something else that people think about when the media talks about assault-style weapons, because, uh, well, they're assault rifles, right? Well, n no, no, not, not even close. Uh, AR stands for Armalite Rifle, not Assault Rifle. And the reason for that is because that was the name of Eugene Stoner's company. And that company was developing various types of firearms, both for the military and the civilian market. In fact, they became so incredibly popular that they started to be referred to as America's Rifle not long after. And many of those, of course, have made their way up here to Canada until, of course, May of 2020, when they were completely banned again, referred to as assault style weapons. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, why are these firearms being banned if they are semi-automatics and they're, they're not fully automatics, which were already banned in the 70s, but for some reason they're still getting banned, it doesn't make any sense. Well, it's because they're black. And if you ask me, that's a whole lot of gun racism. So let's talk about this. Why are they banning these black assault style weapons? Well, in my opinion, it's because they're afraid of them and they want you to be too. And really, there's nothing to be afraid of. The mechanisms of these firearms are very much similar to the types of firearms that legal, lawful, licensed and vetted firearms owners use every day for the purposes of hunting, pest control, sporting and everything in between. And yet some of them look a little scary and we've seen them do bad things in Hollywood movies and the news. And that's why we need to ban them. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. but. Consider this, right? About a year ago, when the government was pushing Bill C-21, nay, ramming Bill C-21 through the House, which they did, eventually ending up in the House Committee on Public Safety, they started to introduce a couple of amendments. And mind you, they introduced the amendments very, very last minute, like to the point where this thing was almost out of the committee and ready to head for the Senate. 
This is after the testimonials of many industry experts, police officers, people who worked at gun shops, anti-gunners, and everybody in between. Now, they didn't want anybody to have their two cents on these amendments because essentially they want a completely gun-free Canada, but yet they can't really even define what this assault-style weapon is. So let me explain what happened. In November of last year, when the bill, Bill C-21, was in the House Committee, they introduced uh, Amendment G-4 and Amendment G-46. Now, G-4 was essentially what they called an evergreening clause, which essentially made pretty much every single semi-automatic rifle and shotgun that had a removable magazine that fired at center fire cartridges, uh, essentially render them completely banned, right? So do the same thing that we did with automatic firearms back in the 70s. And again, they couldn't really justify this. They just said, here's an amendment. We want to ban all these firearms. And because they knew that there was no way that they were going to capture all the firearms that they wanted to ban with the evergreening clause, even though it was a very vague description and covered many, many thousands of firearms, they came out with an amendment G46. Now, this was a 400 plus page document, or rather, sorry, I think it was about 350 page document with over 400 different firearms on it that were named by name. These, of course, were the ones that were not captured by the evergreening clause that they also wanted to ban. In that list were two very interesting firearms, and you may have known about this if you've been following the entire process from last year, or even from before then. But nevertheless, there were two firearms there that were very, very important to look at, which demonstrates just how little the government knows about these assault-style weapons and firearms in general. There was the Mossberg 702 and the 715T Plinksters. These are very low caliber firearms, they're rifles, and they shoot the 22LR cartridge, a very, very tiny little cartridge used mostly for plinking, otherwise known as target practice, and sometimes also in the hunting of small game like rabbits and squirrels. Well, they tried to ban one of them and not the other, but the reason that this is funny is because of what was inside of these two firearms. You see, these two firearms were pretty much identical on the inside. They had the same barrel, sear, trigger, bolt, and everything else was identical on the inside. One of them had a wooden stock. Basically, that's the body of the firearm. And the other one had a black tactical stock. Yeah, you can kind of see where I'm going with this. So they wanted to ban the one that was tactical but not the one that had a wooden stock, because in their eyes, the wooden one was a hunting rifle and the black one was an assault style weapon. What's really interesting about this is if you were a person who had the wooden stock version of this firearm and the bill just happened to pass at that time, you would be a law abiding citizen and a criminal at the same time, because you would have both a non-restricted and a prohibited firearm at exactly the same time. This is one of many, many different things that the government have done or failed to do that demonstrates their ineptitude and their inability to understand really anything about firearms, including not being able to define what an assault style weapon is while trying to use it to legislate and regulate. So I hope that's brought you a little bit of food for thought. And uh, if you have some thoughts of your own, share those in the comments below. We also do have a Discord community which you can join by following the link down in the description, right alongside that link to our Etsy shop if you wanna help support the channel. And if you would rather just buy me a cup of coffee or a beer, there is a super thanks button down below the video as well. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this entertaining and somewhat educational. If you wanna see more of these, become a subscriber and hope to see you in the next video. Until then, happy shooting. Assault style firearms, fuck. Ha, 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 ha.